Welcome back. As we continue off with the conversations this morning, the Africa Institute of Environmental Law, in collaboration with the Namibia Council of Churches, will be hosting a series of strategic events in Fintuk, which already commenced on the 11th. It will be ending on the 16th of November, and it is part of the Energy Transition Project. This initiative aims to reduce Namibia's reliance on oil and gas for revenue while highlighting the crucial roles that agriculture and tourism can play in fostering green economic growth and long-term sustainability in the region. Joining us now for this conversation this morning is Uhuru Dempes, advisor of the Social Economic Justice Unit of the Council of Churches in Namibia. Mr. Dempes, it's always great talking to you. Good morning and thanks for having me. Thank you so much for talking to us. Kindly just talk to us about the collaboration between the Council of Churches in Namibia as well as the Africa Institute of Environmental Law. Yes, I, I, I also want to uh, draw us to, uh, to our attention that the world has uh, gathered this week in uh, Azerbaijan for COP29. And it's within this uh, context uh, of the climate crisis discussions that locally here in Namibia, we are also collaborating uh, with regional partners um, as local churches and civil society organizations. So beginning of this year, this partnership uh, kick-started uh, with a project inception workshop where we were looking at what would be the key milestones and priority areas for intervention. The discovery of oil and gas in Namibia has presented both opportunities and challenges. And since these sectors are new to, to um, Namibia, we thought it wise to uh, open up debate and discussion about a deeper understanding of the oil and gas industry uh, its positive and, and negative um, impacts. We also uh, want to learn from case studies from other countries, our neighboring countries and others elsewhere, about how they have dealt with the discoveries of, of oil and gas. We know the concepts of the Dutch disease where some countries have overly relied on, uh, especially on oil, and have neglected investment in, in other sectors. So we want to draw from these lessons and, and make sure that in Namibia, uh, we, we, we learn from the good lessons and we avoid the mistakes that has been made. As the COP29 is going on this week, well, we also reminded that Namibia has made a commitment in terms of the Paris Agreement. And um, uh, because of the climate crisis, uh, further development of fossil fuels, uh, drilling of uh, new oil and so on is discouraged. It's not prohibited in the Paris Agreement, but it's discouraged because of the huge impact that oil and fossil fuels have on, on the climate crisis. So we are also discussing how do we deal with this dilemma as, as, as Namibia. So this project is aimed at providing knowledge and awareness to churches and civil society so that they can participate in these discussions from an informed position. All right. The project emphasizes reducing reliance on oil and gas. From your perspective, how does this align with the values and the missions of the Council of Churches in Namibia? Yes, we want to, from, from our initial assessments, we have realized that uh, some countries have, uh, when they have discovered oil resources, have overly relied on, on this resource and have neglected um, other sectors. In Namibia, we are specifically um, worried about our uh, sort of long-term and strategic, more sustainable sectors such as agriculture and tourism, which are major job creators, employs huge numbers of, of citizens, um, and they, they also have great potential, provided that there is increased investment in, in those sectors. So 
as uh, as churches and civil society, we we are concerned about uh, mobilizing additional resources to be able to deal with the challenges of poverty, unemployment, hunger, uh, inequality that that uh, we are battling with in, in Namibia. So. Although um, uh, we are hoping that the discovery of oil would mean uh, additional revenue for, for government, we, don't, we, we, we would want uh, some of those uh, revenues to be directed towards investment in more long-term sustainable uh, strategic sectors such as um, uh, agriculture and, and, and tourism. So we, we, we want to make sure that there is, there is this balance. We are not uh, anti-oil, although you know, we, are not, we are aware about the dangers it has on the climate crisis. We are also disappointed that many of the countries that are on the forefront of this uh, the fight against uh, the, the climate crisis is still is issuing licenses and is still drilling for, for more oil. Um, and uh, we, we of course uh, cannot be left behind. And, and but we need to be, we need to strike the balance and make sure that if there are additional revenues coming from oil and gas, we invest them in more sustainable sectors. But that we also use those revenues to to take care of our environment. All right. Mr. Denpers, kindly just talk to us more about the youth desk's involvement in this, pro in this entire project. What are some of the activities targeting the youth? Yes, yesterday we, we had a session with about 30 to 40 youth drawn from the member churches of the Council of Churches in Namibia and from other secular youth organizations. Uh, it, it was called a youth ideation uh, workshop where youth were generating some ideas around um, deepening their understanding around the sectors of, of oil and gas, looking at uh, what opportunities might, might be there in terms of youth enterprise or in terms of employment opportunities, but also what the, what the potential uh, and damaging impacts could be of this uh, uh, oil and gas on the on the environment, so that they can also be informed about about these facts. Uh, today, we will go uh, deeper uh, with the with the with the youth group to look at how they can get involved uh, in in these sectors as it as it unfolds and it as it been in, in been developed. We are also bringing in green hydrogen so that they can also um, deepen their understanding of what green hydrogen is about and what uh, potential opportunities it has uh, for the youth. We are hoping that the youth will discuss some ideas around um, forming some kind of a loose network that will continue to advocate for uh, um, um, access for the youth to these opportunities if there are policy engagements that needs to be made, that the youth are at the, at the forefront of that. And uh, we had a, a local a youth climate justice advocate, Dion Sekusa, that really took the, the young people, explaining to them the, the, the different sectors and what opportunities are there, what challenges they present. And we are hoping when we conclude today, we will have a roadmap in terms of uh, youth involvement in, in the sectors. All right. Mr. Dempers, looking beyond this project, do you perhaps see long-term roles for the perhaps um, the Council of Churches in promoting Namibia's green e economy? Yes, we, we at the Council of Churches, we are in the process of designing what we call a natural resource governance program, which will really look at uh, a number of different components. Look at the mining and extractive sectors and, and how we can increase uh, revenue from that sector to address the challenges of poverty, unemployment, inequality that we have. We also want to look at the oil and gas sector. We want to look at other sector, all the sectors that are dealing with our, our natural resources. We want to combine under this, under this program. Organizations like the African Institute of Environmental Law will provide capacity building, technical assistance to churches and civil society in Namibia 
as they get involved in uh, issues of policy, issues of the environment, issues of health, issues of taxation, uh, that are dealing with issue, uh, the National Resource Governance Program. So we, for us, this is an ongoing initiative. Uh, early next year in January, we will have a, a series of planning workshops. We will also go out to the regions, especially with communities that are affected by mining, by oil and gas, like in, in, the, in the Kavango regions, in, in the Ludrets uh, area, or Karas region in the south, but also others that are affected by mining and extractives and so on, and, and see how we can make sure that community interests and um, benefits to, to, to Namibia in general are, are increased so that we can, we can really um, uh, address the contradiction of Namibia being such a well-endowed country with natural resources, but majority of its citizens uh, remain poor and that even some innocent children have to lose their lives uh, due to hunger that can be pre prevented if we increase uh, revenues from, from these sectors and from natural resources and can stop illicit financial outflows and uh, fair taxation from these sectors and that just improve the governance of natural resources in our country. All right. Mr. Dempers, three days left of the energy transition project. What can we look forward to? Yes, uh, tomorrow we will have a, a session where we will uh, uh, continue with the capacity building for churches and civil society to deepen their understanding around these sectors and what's the meaning of the just energy transition for them to understand from where to what are we transiting and what are the implications of that. Um, on Friday, we will have a uh, policy dialogue um, where we will look at uh, what is happening in, in these sectors of agriculture, tourism, um, uh, to what extent are we prioritizing investment in, in these sectors I mean, how come a uh, majority of what we consume, even as food, is uh, produced outside of the country, whilst we have uh, reasonable uh, fertile land, reasonable sources of water, uh, why are we unable to produce even our own food? So uh, looking at uh, uh, policy interventions to increase investment in, in agriculture and tourism, and other more sustainable um, uh, sectors in, in, in Namibia. And then we will conclude by just looking ahead at uh, next year, um, uh, going forward, uh, how we will um, form, institutionalize this natural resource governance program and mobilize uh, communities in the regions and really have a national social movement around uh, improving natural resource governance in the country so that it can benefit people and, and improve people's lives. We cannot continue with the situation where only a few Namibians benefit and live lavish lives from the natural resources of Namibia in cohorts with foreigners while as the majority of Namibians continue to, to live in, in, in poverty. So we, we will be ready to engage uh, um, the administration that will come after March 20, uh, 2025 with new ideas, policy proposals, and so on, so that we can really look at radical transformation rather than the few reforms that have been, that have been uh, proposed. What we need in Namibia is a radical, transformative, systematic transformation of, of, of the economic structures, the financial and economic architecture, so that it can serve the majority of the people and not just the 10 percent that are, that are living in a good life in Namibia. A better life is possible for all Namibians. All right. Mr. Dempers, thank you so much for making time to talk to us this morning and all the best with the couple of days left for the Energy Transition Project. Thank you so much uh, for having me. 
All right. Uhuru Dempers, the advisor of Social Economic Justice Unit for the Council of Churches in Namibia, joining us this morning, talking to us about the energy transition project that's currently underway. It started on the 11th of November and will be ending on the 16th of this month. More conversations coming your way. Don't go anywhere.